to tonight's keynote speaker, Loki Chan. Ever since I contacted her back in June, she has been an amazing person to work with. Milky Tran is a 23-year-old Vietnamese-American writer, director, and editor based in Los Angeles. She was nominated in the Asian American International Film Festival's One to Watch category. She also worked as a film fellow for the D.B. Frias LA Film Award with Endeavor Content at Gever Film School. Currently, Tran works as staff director at Jubilee Media and is a mentee of the Unlocker Potential Mentorship Program. Trans films center around women of color protagonists as they maneuver life and love, as well as an intimate take at the Asian diaspora. To start, um, I was a college book student at Clay Park University, and I went to school in downtown Pittsburgh. One day, um, in between classes, my best friend wanted to fill up his uh, bus card, so we went to go do that. And in front of us was a line of about 12 people. My friend rolled his eyes, and I could tell the people there had been waiting for quite some time. They were irritated, looking at the person at the front of the line. And at the front of the line was a small Asian woman, speaking in broken English. She was stressed and apologetic trying to figure out the machine in front of her as quickly as possible. What people saw was someone who was slow and incompetent. What I saw was someone who looked like my mom. I thought, that could be my mom. My freshman year, I made a short film called Coffee about a Vietnamese woman anxiously and incorrectly ordering a cup of coffee and feeling incompetent afterwards. This film got a lot of praise from my school, the local film festivals, and even was showcased in LA. I was shocked by all this positive feedback because to me, this was just a small story about a feeling that I recognize regularly in the people I love the most in my life. This story is not extraordinary. It's actually the opposite. It's Quite simple. It's not our stories that are unique, it's our perspectives. So, what's your perspective? Today, I will be sharing the lessons that I have learned as an Asian American artist. So, what makes being an artist different as an Asian American? Lesson one. The industry treats us differently. Oink, the film that you saw earlier was made as a part of the D.B. Freeze from LA Award with Endeavor Content and Ghetto Film School. It was a diversity fellowship, meaning no white people. And a fellowship's amazing, right? It is. It looks great on your resume. They are competitive, and it was a huge, gold mine to get a fellowship, and I accomplished it in one year of moving to LA. Plus, it was in collaboration with a huge company like Endeavor Content, which has been attached to projects like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Call Me By Your Name, Hamilton, and they were giving me money to make a movie. How much? in the film industry, you know that's not a lot of money. I had a child in the film and I was required to hire a studio teacher that cost $300 a day. This was a two day shoot, <laughs> so that was almost all of my money. And the day of the award ceremony, it was at this beautiful Beverly Hills venue, beautiful. And in the room, were a bunch of rich white people, and they were celebrating us. But after talking to a few of them, and talking with the other fellows, we all learned that no one watched our films. And don't get me wrong, I'm super grateful for this fellowship and the connections I have made, and I still recommend entering them for the opportunity of creating but it's a flawed system. 
And it's not just this diversity fellowship, it's dozens of these diversity fellowships. They want you to trauma porn your experiences in the application so that they know that you have the struggle. They want you to make these films, but they don't want to give you the additional support to have them seen and distribute it. A lot of these fellowships are created because of the push for diversity and to check off a box. But they create these opportunities and they won't fund our films in the real world unless it follows their narrative of what an Asian American is. Being an immigrant, being rich. And that's not all we want to talk about. Lesson two. Asian, represent, Asian representation matters. Duh, you know that, I know that, we all know that, we all want that. We want accurate representation of who we are. But that's not that simple. It's not just the validity of our existence that makes this important. According to a study conducted by USC's Annenberg Inclusion Initiative, a total of 1,447 directors were credited across the 1,300 top grossing movies from 2007 to 2019. So 13 years, 1,300 movies. And of these, only 3.5% were API, meaning there are 31 films by Asian men, directed by Asian men, and again, over 13 years, <coughs> Only three were by Asian women, three out of 1,300 over 13 years. We have to look at this disparity and think it's not that Asian women are not as talented of directors. So, why is this happening? Asian representation matters to me for the emotional reasons to be represented and felt on screen. That also matters to me because I want to work in this industry. Asian representation matters on screen because if we want more Asians behind the camera, we need more Asians in front of the camera. The way Hollywood will take us seriously and fund our big ideas is if we have the Sandra O's and the Stephen Youngs attached to our projects. Because it's true, Asian talent has power in Hollywood. But there are only so many Sandra O's and Stephen Young's in the world. It could be a catch 22, honestly. We want more Asian projects, but we need more Asian stars. But if we want more Asian stars, we need more Asian projects. So, how do you work in this industry? Lesson three find your community. When I was 18, I met Hanjin Park. He's still alive. I have a black and white photo in the years. So he's actually here in the audience over here. We can give him a round of applause. So, Hanjin was my very first directing professor and mentor, and the first Asian American filmmaker I had ever met. He was living proof that I could do this. He has shaped my voice, my style, and my skills as a filmmaker. And he's also the godfather to my cat, Akwe. <laughs> I almost said son. <laughs> when I was 20 years old, I was so determined to get an internship in Los Angeles. And I did. I ended up interning at NBC Universal. And I found this listing and application in the Asian Creative Network Facebook page. And when I moved to LA officially, I found my first freelance directing gig, again, in the Asian Creative Network Facebook page. And later I joined a Vietnamese screenwriting group where they helped me polish a pilot and two shorts. This past year, I have been a mentee of the Emma for Potential Mentorship. This is a mentorship where mentors choose their mentees. So my very first year I applied, I applied for a non-Asian female director, and I didn't get it. This past year, I applied for a Vietnamese director, and now I'm being mentored by Ao Ming. 
Now I am a staff director slash producer at Jubilee Media, which was my dream company. Um, it has an Asian CEO and founder, and 39% of the other staff is Asian. That's not by coincidence, and I've never been around so many Asian creatives in my life. Asians want to help Asians and Asians want to hire Asians. We are creating space for ourselves. Lesson four, the pie is big enough. This is a lesson I learned through my Vietnamese mentor. So this is Candace Ho. She is a 25-year-old Taiwanese-American writer-director who writes about women, girlhood, and the Asian-American experience. We met during the fellowship I had the chance to be intimidated by her, to distance myself, to not be confused with her. But instead, we became close friends. And we call each other in the middle of our work day to talk about our filmmaking existential crises and to support each other as filmmakers. Because although we want to do the same stories, or at least similar stories, our voices and perspectives are entirely different. Fellowships in Hollywood will make you think that we are head to head and that there's only space for a handful of us or maybe just one of us, but that's not true. Other Asians and other people of color are not your competition. They are your support system. Lesson five, make art for yourself. So how do you make a story with a unique perspective? For me, I had to look within myself. What does Oink mean to me? Oink was an exploration of immigrant parents' relationships with their children. Like a lot of other children of immigrants, I understand that there is a barrier for emotional connection, whether that be language, culture and values, or sometimes just interests. And we chase and crave that connection as children. As an Asian American girl, there was one language, one value, and one interest that was universal, beauty. So I made a simple short story about wanting to be just like your mom. And in the film's world, if your mom picks apart her own body, her own face, her own nose, the child born with the same body, face, and nose will do the same thing. Fathers and mothers alike can unconsciously pass on their insecurities and unhealthy habits to their children. I sobbed while writing the script because it was so cathartic. And it took me a really long time to find this idea because I was trying to be bigger than myself. I was thinking, what do people want to see? What's something new to say? What will be my calling card? What's the next film? that will take my career to the next level. But that's not what art's about, right? It's not to be impressive. It's not how can my art serve the world. It's how can my art serve me? How can my art heal me? How can it change me? How can it be truly therapeutic for me? Because that's why we became young artists in the first place, right? To express something deep within us. So right now, I'm trying to make art for her. So I hope that you can find your unique perspective because it is unique. Stay true to it. Find your community and make great art. Thank you all.